What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out Simply Cloth, an add-on that allows you to quickly create cloth inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Simply Cloth is a Blender add-on that you can find inside of the Blender market. I will link to it in the notes down below. And uh, basically what this uh, add-on does is it uh, makes it a lot easier to set up and work with cloth inside of your Blender models. So as you can see, it's a $19 extension, um, but it's a huge time saver when it comes to setting up all of these different things. So there's also um, a dedicated Discord app in here when you purchase the extension so that you can get in, you can ask questions and uh, see videos associated with the um, videos associated with the add-on, things like that. So once you download it, you just go into your uh, add-ons and your preferences, and you just enable Object Simply Cloth. And that's going to pop up a little tab right here. And so the way this works is fairly simple. So first of all, let's um, let's insert a couple planes. So we're going to insert a plane. We're going to insert a sphere or a UV sphere. I'm going to scale that down a little bit, and then we're going to insert another plane. And I'll just move the plane up a little bit, maybe scale it out some more. So what this add-on does is it simplifies the process of setting up cloth inside of Blender. So you can see how simply cloth right here pops up a couple buttons. And so what we want to do is we want to make this into a cloth and then we want to make these into colliders, meaning things that the cloth is going to collide with. And so that's as simple as selecting an object. And if you don't want this to be a cloth, you can just set this up as a, as a collider. So we're going to set our uh, base plane here and the sphere as colliders. And then we're going to set this object up as a cloth. And so all you need to do in order to set something up as a cloth is just click on the button for create cloth. And what that does is that applies all of the things in here that you need in order to simulate cloth inside a blender. And if you go in and you look inside of the modifiers, this is actually going through and this is uh, applying different modifiers to this automatically. And you don't really need to mess with any of these, but you can see what this is doing. Well, you can use this in order to adjust your cloth. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to click on this play button. And so what this is going to do is this is going to show your cloth simulation. The first thing you're going to notice is if you do this right now, you're not really going to get anything useful out of this. So it's just going to hit the object right here and it's just going to sit here. The reason why is because we haven't added any detail to our object. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these off to the side. And then now we're going to take this object up above, we're going to hit tab, and what we want to do is we want to subdivide this because when we add detail to this, our cloth simulation is going to get better. So uh, there's a manual way you could do this. So you could right click in here and click subdivide a few different times if you wanted to. That'll add the detail that you need in order to have a better cloth simulation. Or this tool also contains a mesh subdivisions button. So all you need to do is select your object and click it a couple times and it'll subdivide it. You can also remove subdivisions using this button as well. So once you're done with this, you can click on done and you can click on play. And you're gonna notice what this does is this starts to simulate your cloth, but you still don't have enough divisions in here in order for this to look very realistic. So if we look at this, we'll go ahead and pause it and we look at our wireframe. There we go. You can see that this is starting to go through and simulate your cloth, but there's still not enough detail for this to really, uh, for this to really act the way we want it to act. Well, what we can do is, in addition to adding that detail um, in edit mode by tabbing into edit mode, you can also add subdivisions to this. So you can see how there's a subdivision modifier button inside of Simply Cloth. So now, if I was to hit play, and I was to run this, and we'll go ahead and hit pause for right now you can see how now I get a lot more detail inside of my cloth. So again, if we look at our wireframe, you can see how this is really kind of folding over and doing a much better job. So what I like to do is I like to do an initial subdivision and then add detail with this subdivision modifier later. So that allows me to do this. Notice how much faster it is when I haven't subdivided this. So this is gonna play a lot faster. It's a lot easier on my computer than if I was to come in here and subdivide this because it's uh, calculating a lot more geometry. But usually what I like to do is I like to start by adding that detail in edit mode and then um, adding additional detail with the subdivision modifier option. 
And so one of the cool things about this uh, tool is it comes with multiple different presets for kinds of cloth that you can create. So you can see how right now this is set as kind of a standard cloth, um, but this is gonna act differently if we select something like the cotton, for example. So if I click on play, you can see how I'm gonna get a slightly different result here. And one thing we may wanna do is move our sphere up just a bit. So that may give us a little bit better result. But let's duplicate this. We'll do a Shift D, move this over here. So this one can stay cotton. This one, let's go ahead and make it something like leather. So leather, you can see is gonna have different preset settings in here than the cotton. So if I click between the two, you can see how they have different parameters. And you can come in here and you can edit all of the parameters manually as well, but you don't have to mess around with finding modifiers or anything like that. You literally just come in here and change the little slider options. And if you mouse over these, it'll tell you what each one of these does. So now if we hit play and we let this simulate, you can see how the leather gives me a different result than the cotton result over here. And this may be a little bit easier to see if I apply a material to it. So we'll apply a brown material to this one, maybe a gold material to this one. So you can see how based on those presets, this is gonna act differently. So you can use these presets in here in order to uh, adjust the way your simulation is going to look. And one thing to note about this is these also have the options in here for self-collide. And so what self-collide means is that means this object is going to collide with itself. So right now you can see how this is kind of like folded through itself. Well, if you turn on self-collide when you do this, you can see how you get a much more real realistic result with the self-collide option turned on. So another cool thing about this is you can turn these off when you're not using them. So there's an option up here where you can select these and you can turn these off so that, uh, so that it won't simulate. So you can use this to set the objects that you're actually simulating in here. And so let's say that we had something like a cube. So we'll add a cube right here. We'll move it up a little bit, maybe scale it down. And then we can go ahead and create a cloth modifier for this. And let's go back into edit mode and subdivide this a few times. So you can see how subdividing is really easy with this, uh, this add-on. So now what I'm gonna do is under my presets, notice that in addition to having different cloth types, there's also cloth types that allow you to set if there's pressure to an object. So for example, if I was to set pressure here and then play this, and we need to make this a collider. If I was to play this, you can see how you can adjust the weight of the object, and you can adjust if it has pressure on the inside of it, so that this would act as if it was something that was inflated. And notice how all of these will, uh, these will adjust in real time too. So if I adjust these settings, you can see how I get a different result depending on what I do with these settings. So some of these other objects give you interesting results as well. So for example, we'll go ahead and turn this one off. We'll add a cylinder. I would say probably the best thing about this add-on is just the ease in which you can edit things and adjust them. So literally you just model something and then you just add the cloth modifier to it using simply cloth and then you can apply any of these presets. It's very fast to get something set up and up and running. You don't need a ton of modifier knowledge. You literally just click the create cloth button and you start messing with the settings. So it's a really powerful way to get up and running with cloth really quickly. So there's some other more advanced functions in here as well, which I can talk about in a future video if you're interested. Um, it does have a nice feature where you can check your face orientation to make sure things are facing the right direction. So the direction of the way things are gonna face is gonna be really important. But another interesting function in this add-on is you can also pin edges. So what pin edges does is it allows you to take objects and pin them in space, meaning they don't move like the rest of the objects do. So let's say I was to select all the vertices on this edge, all the vertices on this edge, and I was to pin them. So you can go to edit mode and click on create new pins, then click done. And then let's say we were to apply something like a cotton to this and click play. You can see how what this is gonna do is this is actually going to, this is actually gonna keep those objects in place. And then depending on the settings you have selected, 
you can simulate things like hanging objects or other things like that. So for example, if you adjust the weight in here and also the expand shrink, um, you can get significantly different results depending on what you set those settings to be. And so there are more advanced features in here like things like the sewing where you can use the sewing in order to create lines between different edges. So for example, if we were to do a shift D, move this up, and then if we select these two objects, and then select just the mesh bounds, you can use this in order to create sewing around the perimeter. So um, that's something where you can add detail in here really quickly, and then you can use the pressure option to create things like pillows or pants or other things like that. If you guys are interested, leave a comment down below, and I can leave a, a, and I can make a video about something like that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you like this add-on? Do you have some things that you could use this for? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.